Yay. in the bowl. So um, let's do what we do okay. on our table discussion. And uh, whoever wants to start, just I'll start. Uh, grab a piece of paper and let's see. What is the Trinity? Oh. What is the Trinity? Who wants to take that one on? I'll let you guys start. I'm still trying to get, <laughs> get myself hooked up here. She's just still walking in. Simply, the Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. That's, that, that's try. Three. Mm-hmm. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Okay. Yeah. So why all the controversy about the Trinity? I think people just don't want to believe that God created it all with Jesus and the Holy Spirit present. I just, that's where I think people, the breakdown is that they just can't fathom that he can plan this every star and every hair on our head, but he didn't have the forethought to have Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. I no, see your results no, on your face. I'm, I'm, yeah, I agree with her. Um, it's just, um, uh, it's hard for people to, fathom that it's just one person right. and how that goes about. So um, I know when you get um, into your Christian walk, it's very easy to get stuck on one mm-hmm. aspect of something and not be able to move on and grow. And some people, that's where they're at. Well, how is it that he's one person or yet three people? So um, I agree with you totally. What's the most common example that's used to describe the Trinity? Now, this is my question. This didn't come out of the fishbowl. Okay, I'll I'll go ahead and answer I'll my own question. And yeah, I don't I don't know where you're going. So H two O, water, right? Air, water, steam, ice. Oh, it's okay. all the same element H two O, but it can become three different things and all remain H two O, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Right. But it has the ability, as we can see outside today, <laughs> to be water, ice, and unfortunately no steam yeah. until it heats up in here a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's the most, the most used example is, uh, is using that water example because that is exactly like God. He can show up in any form he wishes, and we equate God as the master unit. That's what most people think of. And then the solid being Jesus as he walked in the flesh and the Holy Spirit being steam because you really can't see the Holy Spirit. The word says he's like the wind. You can see where he blows and what he does, but you can't see him, you know, as a person. So uh, that was a good question. And uh, that was fun. That was (laughs) it. I like to say it was an easy question. What do you think, Sean? I'm sorry. I guess I think, you know, we pray to God. Um, and it says we come through the Father, you know, through Jesus mm-hmm. to reach God in prayer. But then the Spirit is all around us, and that's what lives within us, and that's what breathes on our life and makes things change and move, and um, it all comes together. That's how I think about it. Absolutely, absolutely. This is what I love about our panel. We don't have a panel that is consisting of theologians, we're just regular folk, and we read the Word, and this is what the Word tells us, and we go by nothing but what the Word of God says. If it's not in the book, we're not going to tell you, but if we need a comparison, there are things that Jesus even used as comparisons because God created it all anyway, so who wants to choose the next question? I think Michelle does. Okay. <laughs> all right, Ray. <laughs> Go get them, kiddo. Okay. Why are Christians told to love their enemies? Oh, that's a good one. Why are we told to love our enemies? Well, we aren't commanded to hate, so... We're supposed to love everyone. Exactly. Whether or not they've done wrong or not. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we're supposed to always have a good heart and... And we're supposed to be the light, you know, of yeah. Jesus. So even in difficult circumstances, we're supposed to 
always treat others with kindness, even though sometimes we may, may not get that kindness back. Hmm. That's true. <clears throat> and it's not, it's hard sometimes, but... Um, exactly. Well, um, very simple, because Jesus loved us. I think I once operated as his enemy, and he still loved me through all that. Um, so for me, you have to understand that people may not have an understanding, um, been brought up around people that are Christian, so we, we, you have to sometimes love people through that because he loved us. Well, <clears throat> loved me through a lot. <laughs> so that, that's my example of um, why we should, and, and then he gives an example of how to do that. Right. So um, in many examples in the Bible, um, uh, the woman at the well, you know what I mean? I'm just saying he loved, it, there was no prejudice there, you know what I mean? So he's just the ultimate example of what we should do. And um, it's because he first loved me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Deanna, I saw you. Uh... In Matthew 5, 44. There you go. <clears throat> That's where I was headed. Why don't you start with 43? Oh, how am I going to you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of the Father in heaven. That's the only way I think that the true way that we can display that we are sons and daughters of God is by our love. Mm -hmm. And it's super easy when someone comes at you to attack you mm -hmm. to go on the defense. And to immediately fight back. And also, you have to know who your enemy is. And exactly. that's not that person. Right. It's not that person on your job. It's it, it's Satan Satan using that person, but and they might not even know they're being used. So um, when we're fighting people, we're not fighting people. I'm, I'm not fighting right. Randy Kerr. I'm not fighting people, you know what I mean, in the sense... I know I'm not fighting you guys because you're on my team, but I'm saying in a sense, if that was oh, be the well, thing, <laughs> the yeah. person at that job, it, it's not them. It's not them that who you're fighting. It's the devil using that person or using that situation or whatever it is to keep you off track of what God has right. for you. Right. And so when you, it takes a while to um, learn that it's not John on the job, that he doesn't hate you, that he doesn't. You know, but the devil uses any opportunity to keep you off track of where God wants to take you. Right, and what better way to just combat that evil that the devil brought forth by throwing Jesus at him? Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, so you made me mad, but I'm just going to come back with Jesus, so what, what are you going to do? Exactly. You know, Jesus made mention in John when he was, when he was praying his prayer, not what we typically call the Lord's Prayer, but when he was praying over his disciples before the end of when he started the Week of Passion, um, he said, by this will all men know that you're my disciples, that you shall love one toward another. Didn't say they had to be your best friend in the right. world. Didn't say they had to be your worst enemy in the world. He said, people, all of them, everybody, whether they spit in your face or whether they shake your hand doesn't make any difference at all. You love them all equally. That's right. Turn you treat the them all equally. You respect them. And by that, you are the not. character of Christ just overwhelms them. And that's what I love about the character of Christ. He can be so overwhelming when you let yourself <laughs> step into the background and say, okay, show them, please, because <laughs> I can't. <laughs> and he steps forward and... Some of the most rock-hard people in the world will collapse and cry, and they'll cry that sin out, and they'll say that prayer, and then they become a brother and sister and stand up and dance and shout and yabba dabba do and everything else, you know? <laughs> and I know, my, I know my past. I know your past. I know your past. I know your past, but your past, I don't think, you fought as much as we did. <laughs> I used to just pride myself on fighting. Just, oh man, my girlfriends would throw me into some bar fights and it was, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to fight. And I had no idea that God was setting me up for a, a real fight. The good fight. A real, real fight. And that's when, when you see somebody just, 
really get broke down and, and just, that's awesome. That's better than any punch or kick or choke that I could have ever inflicted on somebody. <laughs> you know, at that time, I loved it. <laughs> and in this corner. <laughs> Did you guys already read Ephesians 6, 12? Well, Tina Kerr, we'll nope. just go to Ephesians yeah. 6, 12 right now. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against oh, yeah. the rulers. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You already said that? No. We didn't no. read it, but... That's Keep very good. Say it louder so the mic can pick you up. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Yeah. Exactly. And if you don't know that there are spiritual warfare around you every single minute, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it whatever you want. Some people, unfortunately, during this time are going to be casualties. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they don't realize that they're in a war every day. As soon as you step outside of your house, man, there's people, and not people, but the forces, the, the spirits are against you. And um, and you have to recognize that. You have to recognize that everybody's not your friend, and you got to watch who you call friend. There are people that are called co-workers. Yes. That's right. And that's what they are. They're your co-worker, and they're not your friend, and, and I know they get offended by that, but you have to recognize that we are, and we look at our nation, and we look at our world today, and the way that um, the Bible and Jesus is being attacked, um, and we are in a war every day, every moment of your life, to stand up and say, whose side are you on? In this day and age that we live in, there's not going to be straddling of the fence. Um, mm-hmm. We know what happens to lukewarm people yeah. that just go to church and it's this and that. So yeah. recognize who you're fighting and recognize that he does have power. And I walk in a room and people quit talking. You know what that is? That's the power of God shutting up the conversation so you don't have to deal with all that. Mm-hmm. So that's when you walk in victory. Mm-hmm. And when you know you walk in and they say, shh, shh, shh. Pastor Curry's here, be quiet, be quiet. Mm-hmm. That's power. The power of the Holy Spirit changing your environment so you can sit down and be able to enjoy life. Mm-hmm. So don't ever think when you walk into a room and people start fumbling around, mm-hmm. it's because their spirit doesn't match up with your spirit. And if your spirit shuts down that spirit, that's what we call victory. Mm -hmm. That's a good word. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've been off off the quiet there. I'm listening. So uh, we have read a book uh, in a study. It was Divine Encounters with the Holy Spirit. And what comes to my mind talking about the Holy Spirit is helper. Um, You know, but you have to reach out and pray when you're in moments of needing discernment, like Mm -hmm. you were talking about. Um, And if you don't know and you pray, but then you get that feeling of peace, then that's my yes. Yes, it's okay to move forward in whatever it is that I'm questioning. If I'm not at peace, then that's the Holy Spirit telling me and giving me discernment that that's probably, I need to go the opposite direction, (laughs) like you were explaining. Mm -hmm. But that's what I think of, um, is that, you know, power you mentioned the word power our power is in the holy spirit and if we are in communication and in prayer and talking to the holy spirit then that's where we can open up that power and have that power in every area of our life amen what and and two i want people to know that my walk with god is not going to be the same mm-hmm. as Ian's walk so don't I, i'm not i don't ever compare myself to pastor kerr and say Man, I mean, this guy, even he knows every scripture in the book and you know you do this and he has a different view of understanding, be able to break down words and all that. I envy that. You know what I mean? I want it. So you strive to be like that, but don't think and don't sell yourself short of what God wants to do with you. Absolutely. In the kingdom and have the Holy Spirit and, and, and ask for a discernment. What do you, I, I want to know, and you get in the moments of, um, like you say, are, are you, I'm not putting you on the spot. But do you yeah, yeah. are you getting no are you do you, are you getting better when you walk when you get frustrated of praying and going to God and let people know it's not sometimes you do I know I get frustrated on my job yeah. with some people and um, I want to go into what we call choke mode and I have to pray to God don't get me out of this choke mode because I don't want to choke anybody today you know what I mean and so to encourage people that's a process 
So you're not going to live perfect and not get frustrated, not get mad, not get angry and do things, but you just don't want to live there. Yeah. You don't want to live in that um, anger becomes depression, suicide. You know, so do you find yourself getting better at relying on God in moments of... Yes, let's say. And sometimes when we're angry, we're, we have emotions and different things. And so sometimes we can't, we don't know what to pray. So we can, you know, just ask God to help us. You could even say just Jesus, I need you or welcome. You're welcome here, Holy Spirit. Please intercede in this moment and help me to handle it how I want it to be, you know, need to handle it in, according to you. Um, so yes, I definitely... By doing that, and it could be multiple times throughout the day. You know, there's all kinds of things that happen unexpectedly. Did that answer? What yeah. Okay. No, it didn't answer. It fed me. So when I ask questions, <laughs> this is stuff to help me through when I have these moments. Because, you know, when you talk to other people, you want to talk to other people about things they're going through. Right. So I wouldn't ask you to put you on the spot. I'm asking you because I need to be fed. And what to do in well, my frustration. I want to feed you real specifically feed right me. now. Feed me. All right. Okay? Uh -oh. Because All right. This, this to me is a very, I think the core of like my ministry is right here in this first, first Corinthians 12. I hear so many people going to church and stuff saying, oh, I have gifts. God gave me, God gave me the gift of organization. God gave me the gift of um, hostessing parties. God made, gave me the gift of this. No. I, what I want to really nail down is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are nine very specific gifts of the Holy Spirit. Nine. Not everybody gets them all. Some get none. If you haven't welcomed the Holy Spirit into your life, you get none. That's plain and simple. Yeah. Number one, the way that you know that you have the Holy Spirit is, and you can argue with me if you want, well, go ahead, say oh. You have your prayer language, speaking in tongues. Now, how can that, I argue with that? It's that the truth. is <laughs> how you know you have welcomed the Holy Spirit into your life because you can do that now. That is a language that you have between your Father and you, and that is it. Now, that is how you know. That's how it manifests. So now you can go further. There are different ministries, and I'm in 12, 1 Corinthians 12. Mm -hmm but the same Lord. There are different activities, but the same God activates each gift in each person. That doesn't mean he's gonna give everybody everything. That means he's gonna decide what gifts every person gets. A demonstration of the spirit is given to each person to produce what is beneficial. What does that mean? That means you're gonna have different gifts than I'm gonna have. Mm -hmm. I may have all nine, but you may only need four because in your walk, that's what you're gonna need. So, one is given the message of wisdom, which is known as words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. To another is the message of knowledge. That's words of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three, by the same spirit to another, faith by the same spirit. So, gifts of healing. You may never need to lay your hands on somebody and heal them. Never? You may never. That wouldn't even be with the choking thing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just making I'm, a big I'm, fan I'm clarifying, that, okay? all right? I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm clarifying. I'm a real you know big what I mean? Okay, this, okay. 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 Right. <laughs> <laughs> Healing. Healing. To another, the performance of miracles. Yeah. You may never get the chance to lift someone out of a casket, throw them against the wall, and tell them to breathe, and they do it. Okay. Prophecy. Well, isn't everybody a prophet these days? There's a lot of them. Don't be listening to them. <laughs> it's probably, 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 probably. Okay. To another, distinguishing between spirits. That's my favorite. Right? Discernment, Discernment. of Discernment. spirits. Okay, now discernment is, is this good or is this bad? That's discernment. Discernment of spirits is, is the argument I'm having with this person against this person or against Satan? Right. Okay. To another, different kinds of languages. All right, now you have your prayer language, okay? 
When you don't know what to say, when you don't know what to pray, God gave you a language to send to him. You don't have to understand it. I don't care if you hear me say it. It's not for you to understand. It's not for you to understand. It's between me and my father. Now, the next one is interpretation of languages. If God says he wants someone else to hear what I'm saying, he will make that heard. I may be speaking Arabic and I don't even know it. If I am speaking in my language to my father and someone else is to hear it, they will hear it. If not, buzz off. It's not for you. It's between me and him. Those are the nine gifts. Nothing else. The art of decorating is not a gift by the Holy Spirit. So if you're, if you're lucky, you can operate in these gifts. But it first starts with asking the Holy Spirit to come in and being baptized by the Holy Spirit. A different baptism than it is accepting Christ, your Lord and Savior. Two separate things. Okay, I'm done now with that. I, yes, ma'am. I, I, I told you that question was for you. Yeah. I feel like when I've had other people in my life that have talked about when how you started, of how you know that you're saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit is that you can speak in your prayer language. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that don't receive that because they don't know how to. Yes. Or they're afraid of yes. it. Yes. But when you start that conversation like that, their ears shut off because now you've offended them and made them feel like Absolutely. they're not saved, though. Absolutely. There's still people that they're are saved. They're still saved. And so, so many people, I think, get caught up in that and think that not everyone will receive it. Because, I mean, you just kind of said it. In, in the nine, not everyone will get them all. Right. So, or not everyone going to get their prayer language? That's for God to decide. The Holy Spirit. I think anybody can have any. Absolutely, of those. You anybody have to be can. Open to receive yes. Any and all of them. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I just feel like there's so many different people that I've come in contact with that get hung up on that, that almost get offended by it. But even in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John the Baptizer, baptized by water. And they said, he will come later to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Those are the steps. We don't, we can't skip the steps, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. We can't have the Holy Spirit without accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Well, and I so don't. Many people stop there. Right, exactly. Oh, I'm baptized. I'm 12 years old. Guess what? I went to Bible camp and I came home and got baptized. So now guess what you do? You go to bars all through college and you beat people up and you kick their heads into curbs and you choke them and you do all kinds of stuff, right? But I'm saved, but right? That, that's no. the whole part of the narrative that's being taught. Yes. Because I, when you get baptized, I, I got baptized when I was 13 or 14. And why do you do it? Because whatever body of Christ you're going to says you get baptized when you're 13 or 14. And then the teaching about God stops there. You go to Sunday school and Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. That's what you, you know what I mean. Everybody gets cookies and punch and you know what I mean. You play a few games and that's it. Um, so you're right. Um, it's part of the teaching. And then it's also part of people that when you say they cut off that they don't want to hear, these people are, are pretty offended already. And they, they're not open to wanting to learn from God. So it has nothing to do about what she said and everything to do about them. They're just turned off by, they don't want it. If you went to the next step and said, God wants you to love your enemies, <laughs> can't do that. So it's not really about anything that the word says that people get offended. It's just that they have chosen to turn themselves off. And I know exactly what you're saying because people are going to stop right there and say, oh, I can't speak in tongues. And now she's saying I can't speak in tongues and I'm not saved. Well, I'm not going to listen to her anymore because she's, you know what I mean? Um, it's just not an open heart to be able to get an understanding of God and get in the word themselves. So I know exactly what you're saying because I'm sure a lot of people watching are if they, well, they're not going to be bold enough to put it in the comments, but they looked over at their significant other, whatever, and said, did you hear what she said? She said, I'm not saved. That's Never not what she that. said. So. Never said that. There I are agree. two very <laughs> clear baptisms. And don't you think some of it too is the fact that um, many people believe 
what their mothers, mothers, mothers believed, and they there was no room to add anything in there because that's just not how we were brought up. Right, and it's misunderstood. It's, it, misunderstood. it's not taught. It's misunderstood. Yeah. So we're not going to touch it because we're not. We don't want to look into it further. And to go to speak. A lot of times I speak, and I speak very boldly when I say this, and I don't don't get about as many people. People always say, uh, in the black church, because people define churches as white, black, and whatever. In the black church, church that is very relevant. That's you believe what your mother, mother, whatever they did, and you know. And people say, well, Ray, how can you say that about the black church? Because I grew up in it. So I know this, and I'm not speaking to speak bad on them, but it's the truth. You don't, you go to this church. Why do people go to the, why do you go to this church? Because my grandmother went there. Mm-hmm. Well, why do you go to, the, why did she go there? Because her grandmother went there. So you, you get caught up in that, and it's very much true. And people don't want to, sp- what's wrong with the church today is they do not want to speak the truth in fear of offending people. Right. Um, they do not want to say that, well, this is what's happening here and this was from our world today. People do not want to speak the truth because um, tides might diminish. People might want to come. People don't want to come to church because, hey, we can't talk about what the Bible says about um, homosexuality right. because mm-hmm. if we do, people might not tune in. Well, it's not me saying that. This is what the Bible says. It's not, and it's not Ray saying, I hate you. Um, I don't love you. This is what the Bible says, and this is what we've gotten away from of people just saying the truth. No, I don't agree with that. All oh, you hate. No, I didn't say that. I don't agree with that. Um, why don't you agree? Because that's what the Bible t- teaches me, and I well, trust him what he person. says. you love the person. You hate the sin. So you always love the person. Yes. But yes. once you say what she said, once you right. say this, then yeah. he's he, he hates me. You know what I mean? All this racial divide about people are being prejudiced. Um, a white person cannot say anything that'll be construed as being prejudiced to a black person. Um, um, there's so many examples. Now, don't want to get into that, but so many examples. But if this, if it's coming from this, it's it's not about being black or white. It's not about being that. But just because uh, Pastor Kerr said it, then it becomes. The devil takes it and uses it. Now it's prejudice. But we have to, as Christians, have to speak the truth, no matter the audience, no matter who's there. And I do. I don't care who's around or whatever. I'm going to stand on this word, and I'm going to stand on it until the day he returns, which I do believe is really soon. So um, people are going to be offended. Mm -hmm. Um, There's probably a lot of young people sitting here staring at me saying, that old dude, he don't know what he's talking about. He don't know what's going on. He don't know what what we're seeing out here today. Yes, I have. Yes, I do. Been there and done that. And they have time. They have they time. They have all kinds of time. It, but it's not that. it's not like the seventies. The seventies, man. You know, people wearing the long hair and the afros, and you know, they're having a good time. That the time is very short right now. And I, I um. I don't. I don't hate it, but my kids are not going to get to live the life that I lived. As far as growing up, and my kids yeah. don't have the time mm-hmm. that I may have had when I grew up about coming and understanding Christ and coming to Him. It's it's time now to be very vigilant in telling the people that you love that Jesus is on His way back. He's not um, packing his suitcases. He's not making a plan. He is on His way back, and it could happen at any moment. Yes. And um, I was talking to a lady. And I'm going to be here done in a minute. I was talking to a lady and she was talking about, um, um, she went to a funeral and how this guy got up and he never offered salvation to people. He never talked about people coming to, um, to Christ. The time is now to give your life to Christ. You may not be able to walk out of here, out of this. You may not be able to walk out of this service and have another chance. If you don't do that, if you don't do that today, right now, when you leave here, when you take your last breath, there will not be a secondary line and God say, stand over here. We're going to check you out again. Either you're going to go to hell or you're going to go to heaven. 
And that's what the truth is. And that's what the urgency is for people to give their life to Christ and not understanding, not understand Pastor Kerr fully what he's saying, but hang around him, stick around him a little bit and you'll start to see it. You'll see his fruit. So, I mean, um, I came here today with a lot on my mind, but I want to be able to say that give your life to Christ wherever you are right. right now at this moment. Stay encouraged, even though you don't see things changing. Stay encouraged, even though your husband's still going to the bars. Stay encouraged, even your wife's talking about you doing all this. Stay encouraged and stay in it, especially for you young people. Don't believe all this media stuff. Don't believe all this these people out here are saying, this is the right way, this is not the right way. The Bible is the only way. Mm -hmm. And one day when we come to it, um, I'd rather get to the end um, knowing um, I live my life for Christ. And the people say, well, I don't know if there's a God or not. We'll see. Well, I'm going to take my chances what there is and all the rewards you go with it. So that's all I want to say. I think people don't realize that there truly, 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 truly is a hell. Mm -hmm. And no one talks about it. Well, and hell is not a fun place. We don't have movies that touch on what hell really is. We have people's ideas of what hell is, but hell is forever. My you don't get a chance. My father taught me, and he preached it all my life growing up. Hell is hot. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> not. It's not a place that oh, it's going to be okay. But right, right. It's really not going to be okay. Forever. Yeah. And if you don't think that you have tomorrow, I, it just. I spent so many years on the ambulance and I have looked into the faces of so many dead people that thought they had tomorrow. Mm. And unless you've looked into the eyes of someone who just got smacked by a semi truck, you know, that's, it can happen in an instant, just an instant and you're done. There mm. is no 20 seconds to be like, okay, God, hang on. I got a couple more seconds to breathe. Um, yeah, so I was wrong. I really want you. There's no time for that. There is no, absolutely no time for that. It can happen so fast. So that's why I appreciate, Pastor Kerr, when you guys preach, that you preach the truth. And you're not worried about preaching for numbers. You're not worried about preaching for people liking you and doing that. Um, that you just preach the truth. So I appreciate it. People that. don't like me. I'm okay with that, too. <laughs> it's the word the word that a couple weeks ago remnant remnant, remnant. I remnant believe that's that's been going with me f ever since you said that realizing how few that's going to be mm -hmm. people think there's going to be a lot of people in heaven they're going to be mm -hmm. surprised I mean there, there are going to be a lot of people but people they thought they were going to be there that have been playing church mm -hmm. for years and that there's only a few a select few that live that life um, 100% for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's been my word all month and recognizing that, hey, there's only going to be a few. Yeah. And I'm going to be one of those few. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can say that. So not only do I want to be there, but <laughs> I want, I want jewels and glitter galore. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you, you're going to get all those jewels and you're going to have that crown. And then the word says, you take that crown off and you cast it before the Father. That's right. And you do that for eternity. Those jewels don't mean anything except the fact that they are things that you did in your life to bring glory to Him. He gave you that crown. He offered you the opportunities to pick up that rock. And then when you get to heaven, you get to take that off and present it to Him and say, thank you, Father, for allowing me to live this life and empowering me live this life thank you and you get to say that for eternity and people don't realize how fun that's going to be you know it makes it if the for those that have great fathers and for those that didn't have great fathers i think that when you're when your daddy tells you you did a good job or he loves you or he's just super proud of you or he talks about others to you you know, you just, you can't help but get overwhelmed and excited because your daddy is so proud of you. I can't imagine yeah. how amazing it's going to be 
that's that's really all to strive for. Not really. Job well done mm-hmm. by a good, a good and faithful, faithful servant. servant. So you have a goal. That's where you want to be. You have a goal. Nothing else matters. Nothing. 4,500 likes on your Facebook pages don't matter. None of that stuff matters. No. It's, it's like smoke. It's here today, gone in an instant. The only thing that matters is the life of Christ. That's it. And living his character to its fullest. It's all about his character. You sure it's not about the money? It's about the name of Jesus. Ray, I'm going to get you for that one. (laughs) And that means character. So if you're not living the nine, you're not living his character. If you're not living his character, you're not being effective. If you're not being effective, God's up there going, hmm, I'm going to have to send him to the woodshed. You sure it's not about the title? (laughs) There's not a title on earth that makes any difference except son or daughter of God. You're either a prince or a princess of the Most High God. Are you sure it's not about likes on Facebook? Uh, no. How many stars can I get? I'm just making sure. I want to make sure I'm on the right side. Because if not, I want to put some things on Facebook where I can get generate some more likes. If it's just, about just that. remember, <laughs> the things that are are the best are when you say good things on Facebook and you get all those dislikes <laughs> because you know that you're pinching nerves yes. <laughs> and you're making people squirm in their seats. That's um, okay. Of course, that's fun. That's all fun and funny, but um, you know the, what we talk about here is is the truth, and um, there's only one truth. There's only one truth. Yep. They try to preach all kinds of junk out there, and they get people conned into believing it. But there's only one truth. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me." Amen. Period. End of quote. Amen. So. Do we want one more? Or no? It's up to you. you I mean, what else do people have to do? They're snowed in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you want me to read this one? Of course. I wish. I wish we were snowed in. You didn't read one, did you? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'll talk a lot. I'm I'm just. We kind of covered this one already, but we can still, we can cover it again. Why are people afraid to die? They don't know where they're going. Uh-uh. There's that, that's there's a couple of things, and I think for a Christian person, and I'll, I'll speak in reference to maybe my mom, and I'll speak in reference to a lady that I recently sat with who passed away, and when I went into the room, she said, "I'm afraid," and I, I don't know. Of course, it's probably, she knew where she was going, um, but some people just want to stay here. Um, they're going to miss people or yes. whatever. Yes. But then as I talked to her, it got more evident what she was afraid of. And she said, you have to talk to them. Yes. And I'm not going to say who them is, yes. but she mentioned yes. names. But they're more worried about leaving here and yep. maybe not seeing people that they love, even gave birth to, yep. not making it and seeing them again. Um, so I think there's a, a lot of reasons, um, people don't, um, and it could be, they don't know where they're going and they're, they're at the point of, oh man, I've wasted 60 years. What do I do? Mm-hmm. Not knowing that at that moment they still can yeah. accept Jesus. And he's so gracious that he would invite them into the kingdom like he did the thief on the cross. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I think for a Christian, the biggest thing is leaving people behind that they know that aren't saved. I mean, I know that's my biggest concern right now with my family is that I want people to be saved. Right. Um, and it may not be through me. It may be through, I understand, through Pastor Kerr. But I want everybody to come to the realization, I want all my family in heaven. But then I'm a realist, too, to know that that's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, because some people have hardened their hearts and won't accept Christ. And that's a shame. Well, I think some people are afraid because they don't know. They fear the unknown. They don't know if it's going to hurt. How long will it take? What's it going to be like? You know, just 
You know, I, th I think one of the biggest things that we, we didn't cover in that question is I don't know that people are so much afraid of death itself other than the fact of heaven or hell. I think it's the anticipation of death that scares them. Because once death happens, it's done. You're over. Lights out. It's over. But the anticipation of how am I going to die? Am I going to linger in this bed, hooked up in all these tubes for the next six months, and then gradually fade away? Or am I going to get hit by a bus? Or how am I going to go? <laughs> how, what's going to happen to me? Yeah. What's going to happen to me? How am I going to go? That anticipation gets people all out of sorts. Because once death happens, you're over the line, buddy. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> once you're dead, you're dead. You're not coming back again. <laughs> so the anticipation of how you're going gets people worked up beyond measure, in my experience. So how do you grow and overcome that? I don't care how I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. You see, you can't threaten a Christian with death. Mm -hmm. I don't care if someone's holding a pistol to my head. Right. Or if I'm in an accident and my body gets all ripped up. I don't care. I'm ready to go. I stay ready 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. I'm in this thing. I'm praying in my language. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So I know I'm ready. And I, my job is to take as many with me as I can. So that's my answer to that. Yep. It's mine too. It's yours too. Absolutely. All right. What about you, Michelle? I agree. But <laughs> also, you know, just knowing, I, I mean, I don't want to die now. I don't want to leave my family. I have children that I need to raise. But just knowing that I know where I'm going and thinking about how wonderful and beautiful and amazing it will be someday, you know, that I, I don't want it to happen right now. But if it did, I'd be okay with that because it would be a much better place. Mm -hmm. And you'd be at peace. Yes. Yeah. So I picture beautiful butterflies and flower gardens mm. and all <laughs> kinds of wonderful things, you know. And of course, you know, being able to be right there at the foot of the Father and thank Him whenever. Mm -hmm. Praise, sing, praise and worship all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the time and it's going to be a loud place yes yeah I love how like when you go to some churches and they're like that music was too loud I don't like the drums well guess what it's going to be real loud in heaven uh, yes it is I'm looking for something here. oh clanging <laughs> the clanging of cymbals I feel like we're going to Psalms maybe <laughs> Psalms 150, <laughs> praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and the harp, praise him with the timbrel and the dance, praise him with stringed instruments and organs, praise him upon the cymbals, the loud sounding cymbals and upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. You mean you can dance in church? You're yes. going to dance what? in church? You know, we want you dancing here. What? This is a dance. How dare church. they dance in class? If clap. we had chandeliers, How we'd be swinging from. How dare they from. dance in class? Oh, my goodness. Well, Lord. I'll leave my swinging to you because my balls and stuff can't take it. <laughs> well, when we have our revival, Ray, I'm, 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 I'm going to hold you that. We, I didn't get that spirit of dance. Yeah, you may. Just, you may just get it. <laughs> just, just, just. There are some rewards in the kingdom of darkness. There are some rewards. There's just, they're, they're just not eternal. Yeah. But there are some rewards. You'll, you get some success. You'll make a little money. People will like you. But um, it's just temporary. Yeah. You touched so. on something I want to ask our panel. It's not one that I'm pulling, but okay. is it better to be absolutely cold? Or is it worse to be lukewarm? It's worse to be lukewarm. Well, I knew you would answer it. <laughs> yep. Um, I think it's worse to be lukewarm. You know, um, 
think about being absolutely cold, and that's a horrible position to be in too. But being lukewarm, man, um, as far as for me, as somebody's a Christian, um, and being judged on judgment, I mean, you know, the whole being deceiving and pretending to be this one day and pretending to be that one day, I, I don't want people to do it. Um, and, and then sometimes you forget who you are. You'll be on this side, and people on this side won't recognize you. You'll be on this side, and people on this side won't recognize you. So I think it is worse to be lukewarm as far as when you're talking about how God wants to use right. you. Right. And now right. he looks at you. Be on fire. Amen. All the time. All the time. 100%. And the Bible says you'll know by the fruits they bear. If they're cold, they're not bearing any fruit. If they're lukewarm, their fruit is rotting. Well, they're bearing fruit, but it's not any kind of fruit that I want. That's the fruit <laughs> you're supposed to bear right there. Jesus says in Revelation 3.16, so then, and he's addressing one of the seven churches in um, what we now call Turkey. Um, so then, because thou art lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, that's out of the King James Version. Mm -hmm. If you want to make it real, it, it, it real English, it means you make him want to vomit. Mm -hmm. And if you're walking the fence and you're playing church, and you're doing all those things that you're doing, and then you go outside and live like hell on the street, you're lukewarm. Don't think that you're going to find favor with your Father. Don't think, except by His grace and mercy, that He may answer that prayer. Because Tina and I used to know this, this, this pastor that has a couple of churches up in Toledo, Ohio, and you young people in here will, may not remember this, probably don't even know this, <laughs> You'll probably rem maybe remember it. He said, you can't go out and be disco duck on Saturday night and then come in the church on Sunday morning and lift your hands and praise and worship and dance. He said, it just doesn't happen. He said, God's not going to recognize that. And that's the, that's the truth. You can't go out and play in the bars or do whatever you do on Saturday night, come to church on Sunday and think that you're holy. You're full of holes, but <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to think that way. So you have to make a decision. Are you going to be hot or cold? I know everyone here at this table, and I'm hoping everyone here in the crowd is hot. But if they're not, it's time to make a decision. Now let me read another question. <laughs> if I can get it open. <laughs> Sounds like a Randy question. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to defer this you one to my I mean? brother Ray. No. <laughs> we'll be playing pass one. Does the Bible tell Christians to be hard workers? Yes. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> Um, I don't know the exact scriptures of where it said that, but these people are going to find it with, um, as I talk. But um, of course it does. I mean, the Bible speaks about um, serving your masters. You know what I mean? It speaks about work as you're working for God. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do, you want to do with... Um, in, in my interview for this police job, they asked me a question of, give me an incidence where you used integrity. And I sat back and I was like, is this a trick question? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, give an instance of where you used integrity. And I said, well, that's how I live. I, don't, I can't give you one instance. So when you um, call yourself a Christian, this is what you want to do and this is how you want to live. You want to work as you're working for God. So when you're taking that, uh, they give you a 15-minute break and you take a 25-minute break, then you know you just little stuff like that people don't consider that oh i deserve it you don't deserve anything so um anything that you do that you um, don't clock in or you, it, when you're late constantly and doing that we are supposed to work as we're working for god and show up as an example of what we're supposed to do for him and that's in all that we do yeah. especially on our jobs so that's the way you can show people how you live by the way you do things and these people are they're finding verses. Just yeah, look up. There we go. We're ready. 
Yeah. How are you going to pull them out for me? <laughs> go ahead. I'll let you cover it if you want to read it. You can read it out of here. Yeah. We're at. Oh, good. Turn your 22. Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with every or with eye service as men pleasure, pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Continue. So, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. So that's the answer. See, when you work, no matter for whom you work, you are a servant. And he is your master. In today's society, they may be called an employer and an employee, but it's the same thing. And you're supposed to work for them as though your boss's name is Jesus. <laughs> and if you're not giving your boss 100% of your time and 100% of your effort, then you're not doing any good for him because you're not showing the true character of Christ. Christ went over and above to live out that, that he would deny himself to be able to complete the task, the job that his boss gave him, who happened to be his father, but he went over and above. And it doesn't make any difference how that the boss is treating you and how you're supposed to respond. Mm -hmm. So you may have that difficult boss, you may have that boss is unsaved, but it doesn't make any difference in how they're doing. I mean, we go way back into the um, the slaves, Hebrew slaves. You know what I mean? Yeah. It didn't. They did their job. You know what I mean? So it didn't make any difference that they were mistreating him or doing this or, oh, he doesn't like me. He talks down to me. Doing you work as you're working for Jesus, and that's the way we get our rewards. Mm -hmm. And let God handle them, almost like loving your enemy. Mm -hmm. So here we go. But before you uh, finish that one up, when. When we're working our job, regardless of what it is, and let's say we're working a factory, and a factory says that you're supposed to do this, this is your job, and your job is maybe as simple as you just put a piece of steel in, hit palm buttons, the machine comes down, you take it out, put it on the conveyor, and then you sit there and you text for the next 20 minutes, <laughs> and then you put another piece in. No, 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 that's not your job. Your job is to do your job. Texting is what you do on your break. And watching movies is what you do on your break. And whatever is what you do on your break. Because if not, in essence, you're stealing hmm. from your boss. You're stealing his time. He's paying you to work. So if you don't work during that time between, between the time you clock in and your first break if you get one or your lunch if you get one, if you're not working that whole time, then shame on you because you're a thief. Well, that really hit home. So I'm going to ask for God's forgiveness right now <laughs> and try to do better on my job tomorrow. <laughs> this question says, Dear Deanna, <laughs> <laughs> what is the purpose of being filled with the Holy Spirit, and how do you receive it? Oh, boy, the purpose of being filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> to me, being filled with the Holy Spirit, the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit is the same purpose that Jesus had when he walked the earth. He is as real right now in us as he was when his feet touched this earth. You are baptized by the Holy Spirit, which is different than being baptized by water. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, a lot, a lot of churches don't teach that. You are baptized by water, and then one will come along and baptize you by the Holy Spirit. That is where you get all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you'd like to read 2 Corinthians, it's full of wonderful nuggets about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Then you can do your works through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you can. 
Yeah, just read uh, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And the, what I like about that, I'm glad you brought that up. What I like about that is you hear and you talk about the gifts in 12. In 13, God just happened to sandwich in a chapter about love. And then in 14, he finished talks about the gifts. And then he finishes it all up with whatever you do, do it with love. Because if you don't do it with love, everything else I just taught you <coughs> isn't worth a rip. You know, so it all has to be love. Whether you get all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit right. or if you get one. It, you shouldn't be worried about it because God will use you and give you the gift you need at the time you need it. You know, I'm thinking about the Holy Spirit and what it, because I'm in lessons, and uh, if you don't have it, because it's guidance, protection, um, it's just how you're led in life. And I was talking to my son Braylon uh, the other day, and um, he we, we was having a discussion about chores <laughs> and bad decisions and making excuses. When you have the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you, that's what's going to correct those bad decisions. And, and I said, you know what happens when you make bad decisions, where it can lead you? Prison. Because I just got off the phone talking to my cousin who's in jail, <laughs> who previously said, and he, was, and he was telling me about making all these excuses. And, but these excuses he was making were decisions. Um, he, I got rolled up for this when I was in work release. And I hope he somehow watching this knows that I'm talking about him. I was wrote up for this in work release. And um, this person did this and I couldn't resist. And this person did this and I couldn't resist. And all these excuses, and they were bad decisions. And the reason, and what I told him was, the reason why you make those bad decisions is because you're not led by the Holy Spirit. Because when you're led by that, you don't make those decisions. Um, when drugs are being offered, you turn them down. You, you walk away. So the Holy having the Holy Spirit is the very being of who you are in your life and your decisions you make from texting on the job. So I'll admit I've been grieving the Holy Spirit this week on my job, and I'm going to try to do better. But it's it's everything that you do, you know, in um, every decision, not, not some decisions. I'm talking about every decision that you make from turning right on one street to turning left. You should pray about it. Say, so, man, if, if you have it in your spirit, man, should, should I go right? I don't know, God, should I go right? Should I? Well, last week there were several, several shootings that were down to the right. Can I go left and go the same way? Yeah, sure, we'll go left. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just everything that you do, you, you should be led by the Spirit in every decision and surround yourself with people whose lives show that fruit that when they make decisions that they get godly results, not positive results, mm -hmm. godly results. So that's what the Holy Spirit is for me. It's everything, everything that I do in every interaction. Yeah. So. How do you receive that Holy Spirit? How did I receive it? How does anyone receive it? Well, I'll, I'll tell you how I received it. On my knees in a small apartment in 2007 when I was tired of making raised decisions and living off raised opinions, and I asked him, if you're real, show me that you're real, come into my life and lead me. And it was that simple. So then that process, then you have to take that step about changing your life, trusting what this word says, not just reading it. Um, Pastor Kerr is talking about people playing church. So people read this and they want to tell people, I read the Bible, man, last night. My cousin who was incarcerated said, I'm reading the Bible. I said, but are you applying it? I don't care. The devil doesn't care that you read it. He doesn't want you to apply it. He doesn't want you to be effective. He wants you, he doesn't care, let him read. He's saying, hey, let that guy read the Bible. He's not going to do nothing with it. But so it, it's very simple in asking him to come into your life and take over. But then you have to, that process of trusting him yeah. and then believing, not some of what this word says, believing all of what it says and still believing through those times when you're not seeing results because people want the Holy Spirit to come in and change things. Like they, when you take your food back to Burger King and they change and take mustard off of it. It just doesn't work like that. So it's a process of going through and believing and knowing that you're going to be persecuted. 
knowing that people aren't going to like you, knowing that you're going to get rid of some people in your life, knowing that things are going to change. And can you still stand with God and say, I'm going to trust you when Deanna says, I can't stand Ray anymore. Mm -hmm. He's changed something different about him. There's, there's power in when you walk into a room and people get quiet. Some people get depressed and say, people don't like me. They said, oh. just wait. Just, it's not a spirit. It's just something you do. Okay. <laughs> Out of obedience. Is that what it is? <laughs> it's going to be a lot okay. of prayer. So I can't wait. <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been a good session. It's been a great conversation. And I know we're finished a little bit earlier. Uh, but we don't have to be. We can do one more. And then um, are we ready in there? Or should we? We can do that. Let's do one more. Okay. Just, just for the just for giggles. Oh yay! I don't like this one. Oh uh, no! Read it anyway. <laughs> what? Okay, kids. <clears throat> just to see oh. if. Oh yes, Brian, you too. To oh, see what? if anybody has paid attention to any of your Bible classes. Hi. What Bible character lived the longest, and how did they live? Adam? I don't know. I don't know for sure. That's all right. I'm glad. Jesus? Well, Jesus only lived a mere 30 some years, so probably not the longest. Abraham? That's what my guess was. That's what, 900 years. That's, what my, that's what I was thinking. I don't know. It's not Abraham. Oh, real father Abraham. It's not Abraham. Not Abraham. All right, let's. Uh. You know who it is. You've heard his name. Well, I'm sure we have. <laughs> you guys need to put those smartphones to use. I'm Here's what I want to know, though. Search those out. Yeah. Here's what I want to know. When, Siri, look up the name Methuselah. <laughs> when you live 900 years, though. 969 years. Do you live like a 50-year-old for 900 years? A 30-year-old for 900 years? You live years? however God wants you I to mean, live I mean, you're having babies at 621. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can I say it? Yes. Methuselah died at the eight, or died at 900 years old. Methuselah. Methuselah. If I was still having babies, I would name the next one Methuselah. <laughs> it's a good name. It's a long-term name, that's for sure. I like it. It's the only one that was ever came close to living for a millennium. Hmm. I can't imagine. Ever came I close. Thank God we don't have to live that long. And thank God. He lived by the solar calendar because that's the Jewish calendar. They didn't live by the Roman calendar, which is the one that we use. That's been changed up several times. So was the Jewish one longer than the Roman one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's even yeah, so more we're than in 900 year years. Yeah. Something right now, I believe it is. For those that don't hmm. know, Jewish to Roman conversion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they keep they keep forgetting that you know the emperors were narcissistic, so they had to have a month named after Augustus. August, Julius, July. No. You know, so we have all that stuff going on. Say the name again. Methuselah. See, because I'm going to put that in the back for cash cab. So here, <laughs> you know, I had, a, I, had a, I had a partner, I had a partner once, and we would come up with a word on the way to every run. It was another medic, so we would swap runs back and forth. And on the way, I would come up with a word that he had to interject in his patient care. And he would do the same to me. So it was funny. It just livened up the afternoon or the evening to just figure out how to use Coco Chanel in it. <laughs> in a patient like, oh, that smells so good. Even though you're sick, you know, is that Coco Chanel? And they would be like, but it was always fun. It's just kind of entertaining. So Methuselah, yeah, figure out a way to use the word Methuselah this week. I'm sure you can do it. I'm waiting on cash cab. <laughs> I'm going to have it. Now, you could be at the bed of someone dying and be like, well, you didn't expect to live as long as Methuselah died. There you go. You? Yep. <laughs> there you go. All righty. Well, we thank you so much for joining us today at our roundtable discussion. We discussed a lot of stuff, had a lot of fun, a lot yes. of laughs, but a lot of truth. And the biggest truth to come out of it is if you don't know Jesus, you need to know Jesus. Amen. And if he's not the center of your life, he said he needs to be first. Yes. 
Doesn't mean you have to be a monk. You don't have to go seclude yourself somewhere. <laughs> Thank God. He's seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Make and I know I've said that till I've probably worn it out. But first in your life, and then all the other things will be added. And all those other things, you never know what they're going to be. He could bless you with all kinds of stuff because he's a good dad. Yes. Um, as long as you do all what he time. says, just like an earthly dad. All the time. Um, so, Sister Deanna, why don't you take us out? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to I'm gonna invite you all here next, uh, this Wednesday. We do corporate prayer at 530, and then we start our Bible study at 630. Now, this is a very laid-back Bible study. Um, we discuss new things every single week. We are not on, a, on any kind of plan. You're not jumping in the middle of a Bible study. You are just coming, and, and whatever God lays upon our hearts is what we discuss, and we do get to the truth of it. So we do do that. That is at 734 Santa Fe Boulevard right here in Kokomo, Indiana. Come in sweats, slippers, whatever you decide to wear here is perfectly fine. Come straight after work. We don't care. We would just love to have you and learn with you. And then we'll be here next Sunday at 10 a.m. where I believe we're going to have a traditional passage given. Yes, okay. yes. And then, I'll be uh, preaching. yeah, you're more than welcome to do that too, where you don't have people sit stoic in the in the uh, congregation, as you can tell. <laughs> Everybody's part of this, so that's the way church is supposed to be. That's how Jesus walked the earth and and chatted and spread the word in houses, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Amen. So I've said enough. I'm going to let Ray. Close us out with his prayer. Why don't you uh, give the invitation? Oh, yes. And then close out. If you would, please. The invitation. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be, to come and be a part of this, man. I, I really look forward to it um, when I'm able to be here every two weeks. And um, with all the stuff that's going on in the world today, it's a um, cause for what to believe, who to believe, and who to trust. Well, I'm here to tell you after 13 years, I would never um, go away from what God has done for me and shown me. And the, all the things that he does for me is for him. Yes. Um, I don't ever take credit in anything. So right now, wherever you are, um, whoever you're with, whatever you're going through, I want to invite you to invite Christ into your life. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Believe that he died on that cross and that you are forgiven. Not that he'll work on forgiving you. That as soon as you do that, you are forgiven for all your sins Absolutely. that you have committed. That you are clean, you're fresh, and, and not that you're not going to sin again, but your practicing of living in sin is over. Right. He's forgiven you. Um, and he'll teach and walk and do that. So wherever you are today, I invite you to do that. Don't wait till next Sunday to go to church. Don't wait till tomorrow to go to Bible school. Fall to your knees. It could be anything as simple as saying, Lord, just come in. I want to know you. Take over my life. It doesn't have to be that long thing you find on the Internet or anything. Just ask him to come in and be your Lord and Savior and guide you from this day on out. And you will hear those words, job well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. So, You know that, just really quick. Yeah. For those that are saved out there, I'm just going to put this out there. If you are sick or know someone that is sick, God did not mean that for you. You need to believe in your heart and your soul that he took those stripes for you and that you need to pray and pray and believe and put your faith into motion and just quit worrying about all this chaos in the world because that's not what was intended for you. So don't walk two lines. Don't walk two paths. Don't don't walk a path of God and then walk a path of fear. Just just don't do that. No. It's not what he intended for you. So there's one highway. There's yep. one road. The narrow road. That's right. So go pray. Go ahead and pray. Father God, um, first of all, just come as always and giving you thanks in who you are. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you for the service. I thank you for your son. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for your love, your peace and mercy that you have bestowed on all of us. Lord, I ask that you would just rain down today on hearts that are, are sick, hearts that are troubled, um, hearts that are uh, on suicide, Lord Jesus, hearts that are um, uh, hooked on drugs. Lord, be with those people right now. And Father God, I pray and ask that you strengthen the people that have given their lives to you. 
I ask you strengthen them to be bold, to go out, to preach the word, Lord Jesus, so these people will know who you are. Yes. A great change is coming, and I know this, and a great revival is coming, and yes. I want to be a part of this. I, I want to be a part of that, Lord Jesus, to show people that you love them, that you want them to be saved, that you want them to spend eternity with you. And, Lord, I just pray for every single one in this room right now. Lord, bless them as we go out and leave here, knowing that our mission just doesn't end here after, yes. uh, after service here today that we go out and we are the light of the world. And Lord, I just thank you. I love you for all the gifts and things you have disposed upon my life. Lord, I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my children and, and everything, Lord Jesus, that you do for me. And I just, you're just so awesome. I, it's, it's just hard to put in words what you have done. It's hard to put in words of who you are, Lord Jesus, and I just thank you and I cannot thank you enough. In all glory, I give him praise in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I would like to thank everyone that came out in the congregation today that braved the snow, the slick, the ice. The fun. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We love you so much. And for those of you that are watching, thank you for tuning in. We will see you next week. Yes. Bye. Take and care. We'll be blessed.